Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, host JJ, and today we have some guests from Colombia, which are El and Sergio. They are located in San Blas, Antioquia, Colombia, South America, and uh, great to have you here. Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking time. I'm sure you're super busy there building a lot of things that have been absorbing all the the things you've been already like building. It's been really uh, mesmerizing and really very cool. What I've seen oh. from this side of the screen, I'm sure it's even more impressing in, in, in real. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks for those words. Nice to say. You're welcome. So, um, Hey, um, how um, I would love to um, get some insights. How did you start? What's the story there? Maybe you can um, some insights there. Sure. So, well, it all happened actually very, very suddenly. <laughs> We're both architects and we've been practicing different kinds of architecture throughout our lives. And all of a sudden there was this opportunity to do um, a bamboo workshop in Colombia because um, mm. There's some land here that belonged to Sergio's grandfather. Ah, and so that's a link. This, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a link. link. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, I was like, you're architects from, from UK. How did you get to Colombia, to San Blas? It's like, big question mark. But okay, that's a link. Cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we went direct. UK to San Blas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to find it, right? I mean, it, it's like a very uh, sweet spot. And I mean, it's not so well known, right? I mean... Kind of. Well, it was quite an abandoned farm. Um, it had been in my family for many decades. My grandfather died already many years ago, and um, it was kind of abandoned. And I kind of knew of it and had visited it and had seen beautiful, beautiful bamboo groves. Wow. But they were completely unused and it was completely, well, it wasn't quite in use as a, as a space or as a farm or as a bamboo, you know, space. Mm -hmm. And... And then in the UK, this idea came up. My God, what if we did like a, a, a something with that? Like, well, use that bamboo, experiment with it, build beautiful sculptural spaces. And then the workshop with students from a university in the UK became the um, like the first experiment of all of that, no? And that was somewhere in 2018. And we came here with 20 students from a, a British university. and. Um, we built a first structure and it was very exciting. And it was completely rainforest style. We literally had, we set up tree tents. We had like a camp wow. kitchen and went for it. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's and, then, really and then being here, it was, um, it kind of came up in our space, uh, you know, in our, in like in our own journey. My God, why not make this a home? A lifestyle. And a lifestyle. And so yeah. since then we've been living here. Wow. So you you previously already spoke Spanish, but L, did you also speak Spanish or? That's been a big challenge. Okay. But I feel my my Spanish vocabulary has begun around the building site. So it's cool. like, what is a hammer? How do you speak about harvesting yeah, bamboo? All, the... all these things, and then we go and visit Sergio's family, and we talk about the holidays. And <laughs> a little bit stuck. <laughs> cool. Cool. Wow. Wow. That's uh, that's really one of a, a story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I imagine also like the, the 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 change from from probably you were in London, UK, or were you in some other region of England before? We were in other regions. So um, uh, at the time that we met, we were I was living in Cardiff, and Al had just returned to the UK. Yeah, I was living in South Africa for a few years. Oh, okay. And then I came back. Okay. But it was almost like a little landing pad to then soar into Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow! And <laughs> regarding bamboo, so my big question, of course, is: is it guadua you have there? Yeah, native. Yeah, it's guadua. Yeah, guadua. And is it? I mean, you probably know there. Like, uh, there's a variety of guadua. So, is it like the? Which one is it? <laughs> you have there, or which variety that's, of that's guadua? That's such an interesting question. So, um. We haven't gone into the kind of nerdy kind of, yeah. you know, botanical like specificity of it. We know it's a very thick one. Okay, it's that's thick. Good. Color, <laughs> and, and it grows and, about 22 meters tall. Wow, that's that's and higher than it's, it's, the it's like standard. It's a giant yeah. one, big yeah. one. And we've had people come from other regions in Colombia with, you know, slightly thinner guadua. Yeah. And they're very impressed with the guadua of, of our bamboo groves because it's a thick 
very tall one and it's yeah and i there see from sorry oh, no, i see okay, from there, the there are... okay okay now you go could you go <laughs> okay there are a few other smaller species of bamboo which is not guava but it's bamboo mm -hmm. and there's yellow ones and ones with like green and yellow stripes yeah which we've been starting to explore with um furniture but really for the mm -hmm. construction it's the guava that we use. yeah the guadua is like one of the top uh, bamboos around so i mean this is pretty cool but probably it's not the thorny one you have there so it's the not thorny guadua it's thorny. It's thorny. Okay. Okay. It's so thorny. you yeah. have challenges. Maybe you can help us determine which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can figure that it's going to take a, a little bit longer. I'm, I'm talking to some guys from Ecuador regarding that. I, I want to do another podcast just on that specific topic because, I mean, this is like important, you know? <laughs> so, no, yeah. We, yeah. So we, our background is in design and architecture. And we were so, you know, um, like fully in love with the material we just started creating with it and now like four years ahead we're starting to think of questions like what you just asked what is the exact type we're working with or yeah. you know how could we for instance now we want to start uh, growing the bamboo growth mm -hmm. there's some generous bamboo growth but we want to grow them more mm -hmm. and so we're getting into the whole you know the the botanical the the yeah the propagation yeah. aspect of it yeah, yeah. well that's cool because you're you're lucky because uh, a lot of like similar projects have first to plant it and then after a while uh, six years or so you can start harvesting but you already had it so that's uh, I think that's that's pretty pretty lucky. Uh, yeah, it yeah. was actually an amazing like welcome to the area. To we literally came in through the bamboo grove when we first came here, and to stand in this place with these magical tall species above you and swaying in the wind, it really. It's not just starting to build with the material. It's first feeling really the space of how it grows and very beautiful. I imagine it a little bit like a natural cathedral where you get like this, the temperature is like lower, the light is, is soft and you're there and it's really like you feel, you never feel bad there. You always feel well within the bamboo, yeah. right? Very, it's magical. Very. Yeah. the sound as well wow yeah. just the way it sways above you and you yeah. hear creaking and all right it's like it's yeah. talking <laughs> yeah. yeah wow wow so it has to be really really even more magical now that i have more information that one what i saw on on, on the internet and on uh, instagram so uh it, i hope you you'll be able to do like videos and stuff like that in the future so <laughs> yeah well that's yeah. an interesting suggestion yeah we yeah we, we we're getting more and more into kind of that. like uh, connecting at, at a like we've connected experientially with the groves mm -hmm. and we've harvested to build and now we're going into these are all these other ways of connecting with the groves the grove, yeah. yeah and are there like more than one uh, bamboo grove so it's like it's uh, how how many are there there like existing currently we have two large groves i would mm -hmm. say so we've mm -hmm. harvested from both of them and the truth is that in between them there's a floodplain of the of our river the one that gives the name to the valley so we're in the san blas valley yeah and there's the san blas river and the floodplains of the san blas river used to be all bamboo groves this is the history wow. that we're told from from before like say ancient. people like my father or people that came here like you know 60 years ago and um and what 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 we know is that the bamboo grove was huge. It was a huge jungle of bamboo, really. Wow. And through the farming practices and through mm -hmm. the, a road was built about forty years ago, and through other practices, mm -hmm. the bamboo groves were were cut down a little. They were yeah. separated, and they were. And now there's uh, um, these big floodplains that that have been used for cattle farming, um, where Typical. there used to be bamboo Typical. grove. So yeah. so now. Part of our idea of, of, of um, let's say, being custodians of this territory is that now we want to re-establish those bamboo groves and, and mm -hmm. all those floodplains, let them flourish again. Yeah, it's been a really interesting process actually coming to a land that's had kind of damage from the cattle fields or the cattle farming practice. Like there are some areas that are completely just open fields yeah. and that's the places where we've chosen to build because we've identified areas with big rocks and like a beautiful a beautiful setting. And mm -hmm. that's where we've chosen to build the the structures we've made. And it's amazing the process of reforestation and rewilding around those buildings. And now we're looking at propagating yeah, the, the bamboo species the bamboo. more and the guala and even wow. exploring other species of bamboo, the blue bamboo, the black bamboo, just it's so exciting. The whole world yeah. of bamboo. Yeah. Is, and it, it's so expensive. 
it's probably good if you have like uh, bamboo diversity because uh, I don't know special especially how it is, but uh, every bamboo has like a lifespan. And uh, if it's, I don't know how it is exactly with the, this guadua, but some, you know, they get to the end of lifespan, they flourish sometimes, and then all the bamboo uh, dies. And, and with the, the flowers, the seeds, they grow again, but it takes them six years. Yeah. yeah. You have uh, different bamboos and Absolutely. also different. Yeah. 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 But what we have heard is that that specific behavior or, you know, phenomenon that you've just described uh, doesn't happen to guado. As okay. far as we know, that that okay. that's for other bamboos, but not okay. for the guava. As far as we know, or at least the one that we that would yeah. be interesting to be know. sure of, because with the thousand, yeah. roughly thousand five hundred bamboo uh, types, it's yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a long time. So um, that's a that's a very interesting um, story how it started. And um, I saw you guys have a laboratory, a bamboo laboratory. Can you? share some insights here. I was like, wow, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that's been growing since we started, since we first came here. Because mm -hmm. the way we learned about bamboo construction is just completely through doing it. So we went for a to a course in Bali um, at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been a process of just learning By through doing. immersion in the bamboo world. Yeah. And we wanted to offer this to other people too. And we've seen, um, like many places in the world, there are workshops around bamboo construction where you come for five days, 10 mm -hmm. days. But then to be part of the building process from the start to the end, including the harvests, including all of the treatment feels something that's so important. And it's a real, yeah, it's a real space of growth in the in the world of bamboo. So then the lab is a bit like, um, I mean, it's it, one could say, or, you know, we refer to what we've been doing for the last four years as, as a lab in which we learned no? yeah, to yeah. build, to create with bamboo. We had done a lot of architecture before, but not with this material. Mm -hmm. And and now the, the lab then offers that experience for um, someone who wants to kind of have a deep dive into the world of bamboo. So it's not a it's not a short, um, you know, a couple of days or one week kind of thing. It's more like a two month immersion um, to be part of, uh, of, of yeah, the, the whole life cycle of bamboo from the groves into the, the, um, the, the construction aspect. The final and it's also result. Because, yeah, <laughs> and the way that we build or well, we design, we always kind of push ourselves or test ourselves or test the ideas. We kind of, I wonder if this can happen. If I wonder if we can make this work. And so every design is something new. It's not like we build the same building again and again. It's always kind of this experiment. Something and so new. we find that it, that's almost the lab aspect too. It's not a lab building where you do the tests, mm -hmm. but each building itself is almost a new lab experience. Unique. Of and totally unique. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's probably where the, the next question comes also, which is like the bamboo village. That's probably because you have like different houses and every house is unique and and you're well i assume so you're going to tell me if it's right or wrong but i assume you, you plan like to open up like for others then to also live there or what's the bamboo village uh, um stra uh, like like vision <laughs> well so the 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 um, let's say we we are lucky in the way of having um let's say a, a generous territory that that we're now we call ours uh but then we we're we're feeling or let's say when we arrived here we realized uh we want this to be um a place of like-mindedness a place of of like-minded neighbors that share our lifestyle share our view of the world share our our desire to be immersed in nature you know yeah. and to live in a in a way in which you're fully immersed in nature so in addition to the bamboo groves, there's a lot of rainforest where mm -hmm. we are. And there's a mixed, uh, as I was saying, there's a history of, of cattle farming. So there's mixed territories where there was cattle farming probably up until a few years ago. And now it's rewilding and it's becoming rainforest again, or we're converting it into bamboo groves again. And so the, the, the idea emerged of what if uh, we allow, I mean, many people at the beginning, this was just our home and many people would say, wow, uh, would you build us a house or, you know, um, yeah. and being realized, architect, right? It's yeah. Like the, the, the first thought like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how beautiful would it be if in this territory that has rainforest locations, has 
beautiful streams, has all the frontage on the on the San Blas River with the bamboo groves. Um, to imagine a place for, for like-minded people to, to also connect with this way of, of living. living yeah. And uh, we started then building a few, uh, I mean, we built already a number of structures um, that are um, either for the more social, you know, gathering aspect of, of, the, of, the, of the people that are going to be part of the village. And now we're opening it up to what we call a, um, expressions of interest. And the idea is that in the, in, over the next few years, we'll be building about two houses per year. That's kind of wow. our, our aim. Um, okay. And then slowly, slowly build up the neighborhood. We, we kind of thought about this, how many houses can we you know, truthfully, carefully, caringly build in a year? And we thought, yeah, at our current rhythm, about two, two houses in one year. And so that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, you're gonna be super busy, it'll... busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's like the best thing That's ever to cool. just design and to create with yeah. these beautiful material. Yeah. Um, the bamboo village idea also emerged because when when this land came into our care, we thought, okay, let's make a nature reserve. Great, let's kind of protect the land. But then we realized actually by living in the land, you can care for the land more because you can offer, for example, your compost to the land and you can plant things and you can just, the energy of the human being being in the land can kind of contribute to the, Absolutely. To the space. It felt more, than, more people than just us live there so that there can be more people contributing to the to the space and more people living in the space. Yeah, so Absolutely. That was, that's a important part for us too. <laughs> and it, I mean, it makes sense because we're all interconnected. So uh, the land already being like a super... Uh, like magical place with with people who are like really open minded will be even more magical probably so, mm. <laughs> but yeah. amazing. And and I, I've I've analyzed um, like some of your buildings and I think they have they have really some uniqueness because like everybody nowadays knows like the the bamboo uh, school. What is it um, from Bali? What's it called again? Um, oh. Green school. You know, right, and, and, yeah, from um, the Hardys and all that, which is nice. But um, I think what you have done there is like like more um, it's still like spaceship, you know, in bamboo, but it's like very down to earth and still like sophisticated, organic. So rather interesting, you know, really to 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 like look at it and, and, and all the details. I mean. This is uh, I, it's pretty cool. Uh, I've I've wow. done bamboo buildings myself, and I know the time it takes um to 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 get things really like done. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, I wasn't as lucky. Maybe they didn't have the bamboo uh, or so much bamboo so near. But um, still, I mean, if it's a thorny bamboo, <laughs> and you still have to do all the harvesting the right way, and then preservation, whatever method you choose and then choose how to build it and um i also um saw you have like a special solution for the roof with um, some um i mean maybe you can give a quick insight into the, your roofing solution for tropical because it's it's not super tropical but it's it's like semi tropical sunblast right how much rain do you have like more or less over the year what is it um like two times a day or per average what's the rain um yeah, how it varies so much yeah. we've been through a phase where the, the longest dry phase we've had but um but generally it rains pretty much every day every, okay okay but it's it's, it's like it's rainy half an hour like, or or more it could be a whole night and it could, could be, be this crazy night. like last night it rained just so much it's like <laughs> yeah it's a very very rainy region and uh it's it's also but um let's say very uh, beautiful sunshine in the day no mm -hmm. often uh so it's it's a it's it's quite a, a balanced um kind of climate one could say generally hot yeah. um yeah. in the nighttime it doesn't get too cold or even cool so it, it's but you do it, it's not kind of uh hot in the evening it gets a little cool in the evening which is mm -hmm. really nice and so it allows the architecture to be very open we don't need to have you know wall, insulation, yeah, insulation or walls <laughs> it allows them so the architecture for us became really very connected to the to the concept of being immersed in the in the forest for instance so we have forests all around that are kind of a threshold 
Mm-hmm. And then the the house itself can be completely open to its surroundings. That's and that's that's allowed for for like a like an exploration that when we were in the UK or um, yeah in other uh, climates it, it's it, well the architecture needs has so many constraints to deal with in the way of you have glazing and you need um, insulation uh, doors and you know all it, sorts of it other. It doesn't stop um, there. Aspects that yeah that here it was so simple to 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 just explore spatial um uh, uh yeah uh, sculptural space is how let's say we like to refer to it explore the organic quality of space mm-hmm. and then and then the house can completely open yeah cool that's I mean it, it looks really very uh, high quality of life to be there and have like open space you're below the roof but you're like still outside because you have the connection so it's it's really cool. Yeah. I noticed yeah. something on the on the bamboo poles in the background that the the nodes are are not too far away so I believe you're um not too low right in altitude you're slightly high located. We're at 900 meters above sea level. Yeah yeah that's yeah. cool because then your guadua is um the nodes are near and it's like stronger if it's like yeah. at zero at sea level it grows slightly faster but it's not as strong huh that's so interesting yeah great uh, observation yeah. <laughs> that's how they like microscope, you know, <laughs> microscope art to be honest yeah. <laughs> yeah well bamboo is fascinating you know and the, the, it's like it's never ending and we still nobody knows everything about bamboo so it's 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 highly interesting in right now in time because like the interest is growing um but still uh we don't know really how much we really know about bamboo so it's all about sharing information yeah. and, and, yeah. and trying wow. to uh, do something also smart with it at the end of the day so um again i think uh your approach is really very cool. And um, maybe you can give some more insights regarding uh, the whole, um, also um, what is like um, ecological um, a holistic tourism thing, or how do you, how would you call that your your approach? You know, b- b- beside the thing where you have like people who will maybe live there long-term with you and you have the people who will submerge like for two or three months via the laboratory, what, um, are you like also like thing the option of having people come like to to re- for a retreat? Well, we have created spaces that that are great for retreats, and in those spaces we've we've kind of run bamboo design um, sessions and workshops. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see it as a space where the, maybe the people who are living here in the village can um, share their talents and their skills and their interests um, in the form of retreats, or maybe people from outside. Um, of San Blast maybe want to come and, and use the space to to share their their wisdom and their ideas and their creative their creativity like um, a platform so yeah, then, maybe, yeah cool it could be yeah. the case we're currently restoring um an old heritage tapia um rammed earth um building oh, okay which yeah, is actually yeah. the house of Adobe. Sergio's grandfather Adobe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. so we're building like well we're restoring the walls themselves with the earth and we're also creating a sculptural roof um above it and mm. that's going to be the kind of main hosting space um for the bamboo lab and maybe for people who come and experience retreats and experience other things of, of being in this area wow so you mentioned there is a village near there how far away is it how um connected um is it to your place i think we have a short freeze now no so we're back we had a quick uh a quick internet issue here <laughs> Ten thousand kilometers um a connection but we're back <laughs> so uh, before we have another interruption um, there is one more thing I wanted to um, ask, and it's, um, is there anything you can share with our audience regarding learnings? Maybe you had to learn the hard way regarding your project, because, I mean, it's pretty unique. You can't just open a book and say, okay, uh, we're going to go out chapter after chapter. You're, like, really experiencing a lot of um, very unique um, situations, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think one big thing that we learned is to connect with the rhythm of the bamboo so you can't just 
well, we realized that you can't just build something, leave it and finish. Like you have to really connect with the process of where, where the actual structure and where the building is at. So for example, the first thing that we built, do you remember? <laughs> we actually had to um, leave for a few months because we needed to go back to the UK and pack up our things and come back. Like the, yeah, you know. Like the yeah. structure we built with those students from the UK, the, the first very, very one, first yeah, yeah. time we yeah. came here. We left it covered mm -hmm. with plastics and we thought, great, well, it's going to be fine. It's covered from the rain. It's covered, it's protected from the sun because it's got a shade cloth over it. And we came back and wow, we were. This was like four no, months <laughs> later and the, it was all like arches um made out of split beams and the arches had been in sun and rain for because uh, it, it had been windy while we had been away the plastics had blown off you know and then the the structure kind of started kind of doing like that in in that rain you know the sogginess of the rain and the, all the ties got we, we had done ties with uh, natural fiber mm -hmm. and the ties got all dark and kind of they were yeah. crystallizing and they were they hadn't quite quite started to break but you could feel the whole thing was kind of you know had lost its integrity its structural integrity yes yeah, so it's like when you start go for it and finish it and yeah. completely finish it don't leave it halfway just and, just and that, all the yeah. way and that happened needs, only in four realize, months right <laughs> yeah it, you realize you really need to be present for the works once you begin you need to be there for, to to see it you know to completion and that's been a, a huge lesson for us, yeah. And, and probably is this an ongoing thing because I assume you have termites there still? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, there's termites and there's <laughs> other tiny insects locally called polygia. Polygia, yes. <laughs> eat eat, um, eat the, the bamboo. And yeah. so, yeah, we've we've definitely learned. I mean, we knew it. And let's say we've, we've kept um, uh, true to the idea of always immunizing really, really well. Like and that that's... also means harvesting at the right time of the moon. Mm. So it's been amazing being here to learn from the local people. Yeah. They so knew we came that with still. Kind of... Yeah, exactly. Cool. They say, okay, so you have to harvest between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. Exactly. And it's, well, yeah. it's also such an amazing experience being in the grove at that time. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of like the first level of immunization. And then we use borax and salt to um, immunize it further than that. Cool. Yeah. Well, if it's still standing, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. No, and, and you know, going back to the first structures we built, probably, uh, well, after the very first one that we just described, that we actually had to bring it down and it was heartbreaking. Of like, we were like, oh my God, we, we like that whole effort with those 20 students and that whole month of being here. Okay, we that's been a huge learning process. And But let's say the ones we built after yeah. that, Mm -hmm. We go back to see them now, and they, the bamboo wow. feels it's getting stronger yeah. and stronger. Wow. Like once the bamboo is covered, mm -hmm. you it's know, good. from rain, completely yeah. has a proper roof on it, yeah. and we, you know, it doesn't get too much sunshine on it, and it's it it get like that bamboo is getting stronger yeah. and stronger. It's quite incredible. Yeah, uh, it's it's a beautiful yeah. thing to witness. Yeah. yeah. No, bamboo is amazing. We found in Ecuador, I found some buildings which were over 150 years with bamboo. They just had the roof, which uh, you need the roof. No roof, no bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the roof and shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and you put any um, laca, how do you say in English? Um, like a varnish. Varnish on it or. or um, have you found like natural varnish because i think in colombia you have that actually um natural options for varnish or what's what's the situation there wow tell us about the natural varnish that sounds <laughs> we, amazing we we connect we we found the product locally that uh in the nearby city of medellin i mean i say mm. nearby it's really about four hours away but let's say mm. the nearest big city it's it's relatively a large city and there's a local company there that makes a product for external like if you're going to have wood in external mm -hmm. uh, okay, or exposed for... to sunshine and to rain mm -hmm. and um and we we tested it and it worked quite well and so it's the it's a product we use we use right now okay cool yeah. i'll i'll dig up my notes i have some possibly some other options for colombia because uh i mean there is a lot of bamboo uh, construction going in colombia i think there are two or three even like bamboo um training schools or, or, or um, yeah, no, it's, development it's centers. You really feel a movement emerging 
in Colombia, and it's beautiful yeah. to, to see that. And yeah, uh, if you have ideas on natural varnish or something like that, we'd be super keen to to hear. I'm I'm happy to to dig in my notes and and see and and uh, also um, facilitate maybe one or two contacts there because uh, I mean the good thing about Colombia is really they have you have like this ecosystem um, there which is like existing and uh, and uh, the also the the well known architects um, which have been building with bamboo since uh, like years what over twenty yeah. thirty years even more right so uh, yeah. there is that which is very very cool. Yeah, um, fantastic. I think we're running out of time with uh, the Zoom meeting. So I don't know if there's like one last thing you want to share regarding any future events you're planning or, or updates. Uh, welcome well, I now. guess in relation to the, the Bamboo Village, mm -hmm. right now we are in that phase of, of um, opening up to expressions of interest. We've put out a call for expressions of interest. Mm -hmm. And at the Equinox... We opened it in, in, in March and in the solstice of June, it'll it'll close for this year, so to speak. And we'll be selecting the two, let's say, families or, you know, couples or the two uh, units that we'll be working with to to create the new two homes. Mm -hmm. And um, and then somewhere in 2024, um, the, the, the rammed earth house that L was describing that is the current project is going to be ready to start receiving people uh, in um, for the bamboo lab. And yep. so it's going to be, well, in 2024, the bamboo lab is going to change quite significantly. We're going to have much more of a hosting space and um, and then it'll be, yeah, uh, uh, like it, it, it'll be a, a new experience. Fantastic. Okay, so I think... I will try to share as much additional information on the blog post for the podcast I will publish. So I'll, I'll send some info there and maybe you can send more uh, info in Im images or whatever you have regarding the bamboo village and, and the, the planning there. And um, yeah, thank you very much um, for your time, guys, El and uh, Sergio. And um, well, hope to stay in contact and um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the beautiful, kind words and oh. appreciation of the works we've done. It's really, really great. Yeah, to I meant Yeah, it. really nice to hear from you. And uh, and and it feels like there's a lot of, of uh, like mindedness. We feel your Absolutely. your passion for bamboo and, and really nice to connect and to continue uh, connecting in that way. Yeah, I and hope. your Think Bamboo project is so beautiful the way it's connecting different bamboo people and bamboo projects and ideas and learning. So, yeah, keep going with that one. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope we will do another podcast then once you have more things to share sure. and uh, we'll yeah. be ongoing. Have a great time, guys. Take care. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>